In this video, we're going to look at how to do two types of loops inside of PHP, the while loop and the for loop. So let's get started. Now, the while loop is sometimes referred to as a conditional loop. We're going to loop until a condition is met. And so this can be done when we're looking for data and we're reading it in until we get to the end of our data. Uh, in an interactive type of language, you might find a sentinel value. So keep on doing something until the user enters a piece of data. Now, PHP is not considered interactive. It's going to run based upon an existing set of data, data that's sent to it one time, etc. but it's not going to be working as a person's providing input. So you're still going to have uses for the while loop, but they're not as common. But let's take a quick example where I want to show a while loop and something being done a series of times. So I've started off here, I have a variable while x equals 0. And I'm going to go in and just loop until that value gets to a certain new value. So I'm going to say while dollar sign $x is less than 10. And then I'm going to put inside my loop body, I'm going to enclose with inside of curly braces. So if you're familiar with something like a C programming language, the curly braces you're real familiar with, it's very simple. Now I indent my loop body just to make it easier to read. This isn't a requirement, but you'll find easier code for us to read is really, really helpful. So I'm going to do something like echo dollar sign X, and I'm just going to put a line break. And then I'm going to use the increment operator, dollar sign $x++. Plus plus. That's going to take its current value, improve it by 1, and then we're going to hit the end of our while loop and come back around. If I go and run loops.while, you'll see it prints 0 through 9. That's because when x is equal to 10, while is no longer true, and it exits out of it. We've used the while loop here kind of as a counting loop, but it still works as a conditional loop. Let's look at the for loop, which is sometimes referred to as a counting loop because it's designed to run a set number of times. So here I have an array. And let's say I want to print out each of my elements of the array. Notice that my array is not in any specific data type or format. So because PHP is dynamically typed, all my elements can be a different type. In fact, every element can be a separate and different type. So let's just go through and print this out. And say for dollar sign i equals zero. Dollar sign i is gonna be less than, I wanna get the count of my array. Now, I could come in here and go, okay, it's 1, 2, 3, etc. Or I can use a built-in count function. I'm going to pass in my variable array to it. That's going to automatically count it for me. So if I go and I change my array, it's still going to work. Then I do my dollar sign $i++. So if you are familiar with something like C++, this is just very, very simple for you. It's actually a little bit simpler because you have that count function. Inside of C++, we don't have that built into the language, so we have to kind of keep track of it using like a constant variable or something like that. Here instead, though, we use the count function. I'm going to echo array at index dollar sign i. once again putting my line break. Once again, I'm going to put my line break as well, just so I have it on each individual line. Now, my for loop is broken into three sections, and if you're not familiar with C++, let me just tell you what those three sections are real quick. I have my initialization section, and my initialization section is going to initialize or prepare my variables to use inside of my loop. Those variables, any variables that are created and defined there, exist only inside my loop body. 
Once I exit out my loop, they're destroyed and I can't access them. I then have my condition, very similar to a while wow condition. Any of my conditional operators are gonna work inside my condition section. And then I have my modification section. Typically in a for loop, I'm going to increase the value of my variable by one. That which variable? That variable I created in my initialization section. So if I save this, and come here and launch my loops dash four file, you'll notice each individual element is now displayed. Now there is one interesting kind of thing in here and I get the number one shown twice. And if you remember back in my variable, I don't have a one twice. I have it a single time. That second one you'll see is actually a Boolean value true. So it displays one because it doesn't display true. And that's just kind of by default. Now, if I wanted to do something a little bit simpler and just have that for loop that's a pure counting loop, kind of like I, I kind of tricked that while loop a little bit before, that's easy enough to do as well. I'm gonna say four, I'm gonna use dollar sign I again. This is actually a completely separate I than my previous I, because remember, as soon as that for loop exited, that variable I for it got destroyed and it doesn't exist. So this creates a whole brand new variable. Even though it's the same name, it is different. So I have here dollar sign I equals zero, dollar sign I less than 10 dollar sign I plus plus. I have here my for loop, echo, and then I'm gonna put my line break. If I come and reload, you'll see that once again, I still have my printing out of my array elements. And then I also have zero through nine. So this is just a real simple for loop that I can use and I can have both a while loop and a for loop. Use them just as you would any other language. Very, very simple to use and operate. Something that you are gonna see from time to time.